Shabbat Shalom. Good day, Movementers. Welcome to episode 17 of Scripture Sunday. Let's begin with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to first of all thank you for getting me through the week, Father God. And as I prepare to rest this weekend and do the things that need to get us done, Lord, I ask that you continuously to strengthen me, motivate me, and instill in me the passion and the desire to get the things done which needs to get done, Lord. It's been a trying week, Father God. Matter of fact, it's been it's a trying time right now, Father. Lord, I just ask that you continue to give me the power the motivation and strength to push through all the tasks that needs to be done, Father God. Lord God, I thank you for another single that's going to be released on Monday by Crystal Clear and Big Stakes, Father God. I thank you for looking over Salvation Records, this artist, family, and friends, Lord. Father, as we begin this new uh, episode of Scripture Sunday, I ask that you open minds and spirits and allow the, the interpretation of understanding to indwell in our lives, Father. Help us to understand the message that we're about to see today. Lord, I just give you praise and glory and honor in the powerful mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, Move Mentors, it's episode 17, part four of the Pilgrim's Progress. In chapter one, we saw we was introduced to Christian who found a book, uh, evangelists who gave him some direction, some naysayers such as uh, obstinate and um, pliable, we also met some other people along the way who helped them, such as help, interpreter, you know what I mean? So as we continue this story, we see that Krishna has just left the interpreter's house and he was he saw the, the, the palace and the that the people was walking along and the soldier who bravely charged the doors to enter into the palace to get to where he was going. And then we saw Krishna lost the sack on his back. The, the guilt and sin that was carried around with him ever since the beginning of his book, after he found his book in the attic, right? So now we're on to chapter four, the fight. Wake up, lazy bones, said the voice, and Christian woke with a guilty start and looked around. There was no one to be seen. I must have slept for hours, he thought, noticing the afternoon shadows which had fallen over the hill. He jumped up and went on with his climb. Before he reached the top, he saw two men running down the hill. So he shouted out to them, Hey, you're going the wrong way. If you mean the wrong way for heaven, you're right, panted one of them named Tenorius. We were on our way there, but the further we went, the harder things got. And now we have enough and we are going home. That's right, agreed the other, caught in this trust. Seeing those lions was the last straw. We weren't going to risk being mauled to death by them. Thank you very much. Some of the fear which Timonius and Mistrust felt rubbed off on Christian. But he said, going back home would be asking for certain death. So I'm going on, even though I'm scared too. At my journey's end, lie heaven and safety. Suit yourself, said Timonius. And he and his companion hurried down the hill while Christian kept on climbing to the top. He was badly in need of comfort and courage, so he felt in his pocket for his scroll. <gasps> it wasn't there. Horrified, he stood still, wondering what could have happened. The last time he remembered reading the scroll was just before he had fallen asleep. So the only thing to do was to turn around and go back. Poor Christian went sadly and slowly downhill, looking anxiously at the ground all the way, but it was no use. By the time he reached the resting place, he felt desperate and sat down on the bench to have a good cry. Then he noticed something under the seat and bent down to take a closer look. It was his precious scroll. Eagerly, he picked it up and put it away, thanking God for helping him to find it. Then for the second time that day, he climbed towards the hilltop. Before he reached it, the sun set and darkness fell. How he wished he had not wasted hours of daylight in sleep. Then he thought again of Timonius, mistrust and Elias, and nearly panicked. It was a relief to see, just then a large building ahead, and Christian went towards it, hoping to find a room for the night there. A narrow path led to the cottage, and Christian set off along it. Suddenly, he stopped dead in his tracks, his heart beating fast. Just ahead of him crouched two lions, one on either side of the path. They looked huge, hungry, and ferocious. Christian was about to turn tail and run, when a voice called out, don't be afraid. The lions are chained and won't hurt you if you walk in the middle of the path. Trust me and come. Christian's legs were shaking, but he obeyed. The lions roared as he came closer, but that was all. 
but he clapped his hands boldly and hurried straight past him. When he reached the gate, Watchful, the gatekeeper who had called out to him at just the right moment, let him in. Christian explained who he was and why he had arrived at such a late hour and asked whether he could stay for the night. I have to ask one of the caretakers of the big house was the reply from Watchful as he pulled on a rope. From the direction of the main building came the muffled sound of a bell. A moment later, a young girl came walking gracefully towards them. Her name was Discretion, and she asked Christian a few questions about himself before calling her sisters Piety, Prudence, and Charity. They came and spoke to Christian too. After a brief conversation, the girl seemed satisfied that Christian was what he claimed to be, a traveler on the way to heaven. So they led him to the main house, opened the front door, and said, Come in! This place was built by the Lord of the Hill for pilgrims like yourself. Christian went thankfully inside and was soon enjoying the mill and talking to the girls. They told him more about the Lord of the Hill who owned the palace. He fought and killed our great enemy who had the power of death, they said. He had to leave the glory of heaven and die on the cross, but he did it all for love of pilgrims like yourself. The sisters continued, some of this household has seen him since his death and heard him say how much he loves pilgrims. In fact, he has already made some of them into heavenly princes. After the meal, the girl showed him to a bedroom named Peace. He woke up after a good night's sleep there, feeling so happy that he burst out singing. He stayed in Powell's Beautiful for a few days, exploring the rooms, which had many beautiful and interesting objects, and talking with the sisters. One morning, the girls took him to the palace roof and pointed out in the distance the delectable mountains and the woods and waters of Emmanuel's land. The sight of them made Christian long to be on his way. So did a report from Watchful, the gatekeeper. He described the man whom he had seen passing the gates and followed the straight and narrow path. Christian felt sure that he knew this person and became very excited at the thought of traveling with him. But first, he had to be made ready for the journey. The sisters fitted him with armor from head to foot and went with him as far as the bottom of the hill. There, they gave him some food and said goodbye. He thanked them very much and then went on his way, striding along the valley below the hill. It was called the Valley of Humbling, and Christian was soon to find out why. He had not gone far before he saw an evil-looking beast coming towards him. His body was scaly, and huge rings were folded across his back. His head was like a lion's, and his feet like a bear's. Fire and smoke were pouring out of his belly. This could be none other than the demon prince Apollyon, a deadly enemy of the prince to whom Christian belonged. Where have you come from? growled the hideous fiend. From the city of destruction, answered Christian, feeling very frightened but determined not to turn away. Then you are mine, was the reply. Not any longer, Christian answered bravely. Serving you brought me nothing but misery, and your wages are death. Apollyon thought he had better try a different approach. So he put on a friendlier voice and said, Go home. I'll see what can be done to improve things. Oh no, Christian replied. I have promised to serve another prince, the greatest one of all. Then you've come to grief. All his servants do, the other warned. It looks that way sometimes, said Christian, but it isn't so. For in the end, all the prince's subjects will share his glory. Huh? And do you really think he'll welcome you? Sneered the demon. You, to try to get rid of your bird in another way? Who slept on the hill and lost your scroll? You, who almost ran at the sight of the lions and who are out for your own glory? You're right about all that, admitted Christian. And there are other things you could have mentioned. But I was really sorry for all the wrong things I did. So I asked my prince to forgive me. And he did. That was enough for Apollyon. He stopped pretending to be reasonable and stormed. I hate your prince and all his laws and subjects, and I have come to fight you. Then you better watch out, Christian answered boldly, for I am on the king's highway, the way of holiness. You don't scare me, roared Apollyon. In fact, I swear I'll kill you before you take another step. As he said this, he hurled a burning arrow at Christian, who fitted it off with his shield. They followed a desperate fight which lasted for hour after hour. First, Apollyon peppered his opponent with fiery arrows. Christian did his best to protect himself from those while using his double-bladed sword. 
Even so, he was wounded in three places where his armor could not protect him, his head, hand, and foot. He fought on, but it was clear that he was growing weaker all the time. His enemy saw this and so rushed in close and began to wrestle with him, finally succeeded in bringing him crashing down. As Christian hit the ground, his sword flew out of his hand. Apollyon promptly pinned him to the earth so firmly that the pigeon was hardly able to breathe. I got you now, glittered the monster, and raised his arm ready to deal his enemy a death blow. But it never fell, for Christian summoned up the last of his strength, reached out to grasp his sword, and plunged it into Apollyon's side, shouting, Oh no, you haven't! Not yet! The sword cut deep into the monster's flesh, and he fell back as though badly wounded. So Christian thrust his blade in again with the words, My prince will give me victory over you! This was too much for the demon prince. He spread his wings and flew up into the air and out of sight. Christian got shakily to his feet. He was weak and wounded, but happy, and he thanked God for helping him to win. Suddenly, a hand appeared holding some leaves. These must be from the Tree of Life, thought Christian, and he took them and held them over his wounds, which healed instantly. Then he brought out the food and drink the beautiful sisters had given him. Never had he enjoyed a meal so much. He was now ready to face the rest of the valley, so he set off with his sword in hand, drawn, and ready for use at any moment. But he reached the valley's end of safety, only to find himself in even greater danger. And that is chapter 4, The Fight. Christian now has fought upon God and proved that greater is the weapon that is in me than him that is in the world. Now let's go on to read the little descriptions of the two characters uh, we have met so far. Let's begin with Charity. Christian was feeling very weak by the time he reached the home of Charity and her three sisters. The girls made him very welcome. They gave him the care, advice, and help he needed. By the time he left, he felt ready for anything, or so he thought. The writer of the story probably thought of Charity as being like the person described in the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. In these verses, New translation of the Bible uses the word love, but other ones use charity. Apollyon. Apollyon was the enemy of God, out to stop those who walked along God's way to the heavenly city. He could change shape, and when Christian met him, he was disguised as a dragon. He tried to persuade Christian to return to his hometown, which was part of Apollyon's kingdom. When Christian refused, the fiend attacked him. John Bunyan chose the name of this evil person from the Bible in Revelations chapter 9, verse 11. Another of his names comes in James chapter 4, verse 7. Look them up. So that's the two character descriptions that we were given, Charity and Apollyon. So as we see, as we were discussing last week, this, this walk along the King's Highway to get to the heavenly city is one that's filled with ups and downs. There's sadness, there's joy, there's happiness, there's grief. But all in all, you push forward because you know in your heart and in your spirit that heaven is your final destination. So with that, let's close this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this chapter called The Fight for the Family's Pilgrim Progress. Thank you for helping us see, Lord, that sometimes we make mistakes, but you also give us the knowledge and wisdom and power to go and correct those mistakes and keep pushing forward, Lord God. Just as Christian lost his scroll, he had to go back and find it, and he still went on and pushed again through the night and got to the house to where he found peace, Father God. I also ask, Lord, that you can help us to apply this lesson to our lives when we've done something wrong. Help us to, to recognize we've done something wrong and make the necessary steps and take the necessary actions to correct our mistakes, Father God. Lord God, I ask that as we continue walking along this road and we fight in enemies left and right, Lord God, that you continuously to encourage and motivate us to push through, Lord God. Even when things seem so dire, Lord, just as the song, Let It Come by Crystal Clear and Big Stakes demonstrates, Lord God. Let it come to you. Let it come to you. Let it come to you. Yes, Lord, let it come to us, Lord God, because we know greater are you in us than anything that is in this world, Father God. With that, we give you praise, glory, and honor in the power of my name of Jesus. Amen. So there we have it, Move Mentors, Chapter 4 of the Family Pilgrim Progress, The Fight. Next week, we read Chapter 5, Faithful. 
But until then, I want you to stay tuned, stay alert, and remember, you are the movement. Blessings.